Welcome to episode number three of the Bogleheads Life Stages podcast. Bogleheads are investors who follow John Bogle's investing philosophy for attaining financial independence. Today's episode features Michelle Dash and Stephen Chen from New Retirement. This recording was made on April 7, 2021. This recording is for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. So tonight we're going to go through a demo of new retirement and let's see, I have uh, Stephen Chen with me, the founder of new retirement. Give away, Steve. And he's just, uh, just giving us a little introduction of um, how new retirement started and a little bit about the tool and where we're going. And then he'll turn things over to me. And I will, I have a couple screens up on my, uh, my end and I will walk you through a live version of the demo. Okay. Awesome. Hey, everyone appreciate uh, your time and attention. I'll, I'll try to keep this really short because I know we're here to kind of talk about the product and, and we welcome all feedback. Um, so yeah, I'm the founder. Basically this got started because I was trying to help my mom with uh, her own retirement situation. She came to my brother and I in her, when she was in her early sixties and needed to borrow some money and we looked around to try and get our advice and help from a financial advisor, but couldn't really find anyone that focused on decumulation or was interested with some, you know, in her situation because she had like her net worth was like maybe two hundred fifty thousand dollars, including her home, which was more than half of it. So we ended up doing it ourselves on spreadsheets, and then a lot of it was expense management and looking at her whole life holistically, so healthcare, social security. You know, what did you, you know, we ended up helping her downsize and freeing up a lot of um, home equity and then helping her think through investing that and like, should she annuitize and stuff, questions like that. So we felt like, hey, there's probably a really big need here, you know, given the size of the populations, you know, 120 million people over age 50 in this country. And so we kind of set about building in and it started out as a kind of a side project and it now has become kind of a full blown, full blown big effort. I mean, we have, 22 people, so we're still a relatively small company, but solely focused on building this platform and you know helping people think through decumulation and give them a central low cost, free or low cost way to manage themselves. So that's kind of how it got started. Um, you know, really the way we think about this is we're building a, a platform. So it's not just a tool, but it's really a way to, <clears throat> you know, create like an enable an ecosystem. So we we have the tool, but we also have a community around it. We have a bunch of educational content around it. Um, in the future, we do wanna enable people to be able to find curated experts that can help them, but in a completely transparent way. So we are paid by our customers and no one else. So people can pay us through subscribing or they can hire us to coach them up or we you know provide CFP advice, but on a flat fee basis, like a coach, a coaching session is like 150 bucks an hour or 45 minutes. You know, we'll do a flat fee plan review for a thousand bucks. That's it. You know, there's no AUM or anything else wrapped up in this. Um, but because it's software, it enables us to go, you know, through partners uh, at a very low cost in a very low cost way. So we're talking to employers and media companies, and there's some stuff coming down the pipe that way. Um, a little bit about where we're going. So today it's really like, you can think of it as like a turbo tax for planning. So it's like, you just do it all yourself. You you know you pull the knobs and levers and you can see what's coming and how your plan might change. Uh, and then where we're going is, you know, we're looking at the data at an aggregate level and like what's working to achieve better outcomes for our partners or sorry, for our users. And then we're surfacing things that are relevant to them for them. So for example, we're about to roll out social security optimization that will run 12,000 simulations for an end user to say, hey, we looked at your plan, all of your income, expenses, taxes, you know, future withdrawals, conversions, Roth conversions, stuff like that. And here's how you might be able to get more money from social security. Um, so we can do that, users can initiate that. What we can also do is run it automatically behind the scenes for 145,000 people and surface like, hey, it looks like there's an, an opportunity for you, Michelle, to do this and point it out for them proactively. So we are going to automate Roth conversions, which you'll see demonstrated in here, but we can do that. 
social security optimizations. I mean, essentially anything around planning, we'll be able to proactively do for you in advance and at least we won't do it, but like surface, like, hey, there might be an opportunity here um, that you haven't thought about. So that's like a little bit about how we think a little bit differently about this. Um, and we are sucking in lots of data uh, behind the scenes if people decide to opt in for that, if you would decide to link accounts. Um, and yeah, if you wanna go back one slide, just real quick, and I'll, I'll, then I'll be quiet. You know, I basically, you know, completely independent platform, consumer focused, um, you know, we have this platform technology first approach. Uh, and that's, I think, you know, kind of what differentiates, differentiates us from, from other from other companies. Anyway, sorry if this was too salesy, but I just want to give you the quick overview. I'll turn it back to Michelle. Okay, so there's a, a few more slides. I just want to walk you through kind of the key stats of like what, what we do. As Steve mentioned, you know, the way we get paid is by consumers. And that really helps us uh, stay unbiased. We have different levels of the program. Uh, there's a free version, it's always free. You know, it, it's really meant for people who wanna see if they're on track. Uh, it has limited functionality in terms of assumptions and um, some of the more advanced tools and charting that Steve was mentioning. The Planner Plus option is about 100 bucks a month, a little bit less. And this is gonna unlock all of the charts that we have, uh, all the projections, lots of suggestions and everything that you see in the demo today. And then on top of that, we have uh, Planner Plus Live, which is you know, the Planner Plus service, as well as a couple coaching sessions. And then we have the option for advisor. So we're really trying to you know, provide something for everyone at every stage of their financial planning journey. When you come in the tool and we'll look at all this live, the first thing you do is you work on your plan. So you want to go in, you want to uh, make sure that, you know, check the dashboard, see how you're doing, and then go back, refine your plan, add more detail, make it as accurate as possible. And then you can use our coach suggestions, which is like an automated rule engine to help figure out what's going on with your plan. Where are there areas where you can improve, where there are areas that you can learn about strategies that you didn't know about. Um, and if you have some inaccuracies in your plan or assumptions that are no different than um, averages or um, historical averages, then we're just gonna let you know. Um, after you create a plan, then you know there's a lot of different places where you can find optimizations. So we just actually, um, are, we launched today the Insights Library, which is just an overview of all the different charts that we have. So this is like the, the debut of that. Um, and then Steve mentioned we have a Roth uh, Explorer, which kind of helps you figure out um, the optimal estate value, um, the optimal savings for your estate by doing Roth conversions earlier in your plan. Uh, we also have, um, like what we really wanna do is we want you to stress test your plan, right? So we want you, we're giving you a platform to create a plan, but we don't want you to just create one plan. We want you to create a plan and then experiment with what if scenarios and think about all the different things that can happen along the way. Because it's, you know, it's impossible to plan for, you know, a year from now, let alone 20 or 30 years from now. But what we can do is think through potential outcomes and have rough ideas of what we would do in different situations and really plan for them in a time where we're not stressed out or need to make any split second decisions. Um, another thing I wanted to bring to everyone's attention is that we have a lot of free communities, free webinars, and free education. So I lead most of the demos, the, I lead office hours. If you have questions about the tool, you can come on a webinar every couple weeks. I answer questions live. I go through different demos. We also sponsor um, Ask Me Anything events with hot leaders from like all different parts of the financial industry. So all of that is free because um, you know, our goal is really people educated and learning about different opportunities and strategies that can help them with financial wellness. We also have a Facebook group. We have almost 4,000 people in it right now. It's extremely dynamic. A lot of you are already members. Uh, we have a lot of great conversation about withdrawal strategies, news articles, how to use the tool, what assumptions people use 
So it's a great place to collaborate and be able to plan with others and learn from others' experience because, you know, retirement is something that, you know, most of us only do one time. And then finally, we've mentioned a couple times um, that we have additional services. So you can certainly schedule uh, live appointments to review your plan for accuracy or for just help understanding some of the charts. Um, I run most of those sessions. And then we also have a CFP in-house who will help you with your plan. And we really try to keep this low cost and we're able to do that because we're really leveraging our technology platform uh, to do that. So any questions before I get started with the demo? Okay, so the first thing I wanna take everyone through is the onboarding process. Uh, here, you're gonna start the plan. You have an option to go through a quick version or a comprehensive version. Tonight, I'm gonna to go through the quick version just to give you a sense of the types of questions that are in the onboarding process. So we're gonna ask you a little bit about yourself, if you're married and have a spouse. We're gonna ask you generally about your household income, what you think your social security estimates are, how much you have in savings at a very high level because once you go into the plan, you'll have an opportunity to refine it and add more assumptions. We're gonna ask if you have a pension, uh, if you own your home or if you have um, And then we ask also about medical expenses and you know, your other monthly expenses or you know, the things that you're paying for on a monthly or an annual basis. Once you finish up, you're gonna to go to a dashboard and I'm actually gonna to switch to my demo account here and you're gonna land on the dashboard page. When you're here, uh, the first thing you might notice is your scorecard. So we're gonna give you a score. This is, uh, represents the ratio of income to expenses. And it's just kind of one indicator that's letting you know, how are you doing? Are you on track to have enough income to cover your expenses? We're also giving you the current net worth based on the information that you entered into your plan, your average monthly retirement income, your end estate value, so how much you're projected to have at longevity age, and if your savings are gonna run out. Okay, I recommend that you come back to these key indicators as you're making updates to your plan because they kind of benchmark where you start versus where you end up after you you know, spend some time revising your plan, adding detail or doing what if scenarios. This main chart on the dashboard is called the lifetime retirement projections chart. Okay, I like to call it the story of retirement because what it's doing is it's showing us how our income is gonna cover expenses over time. So we start today uh, here in 2021 and we're looking out at our income. So all the columns represent income. We have different ways of sources of income, whether it's work, social security, annuities, pensions. And then we also count income as income that we're pulling out of our savings accounts. So 401ks, um, when we're taking withdrawals in the future, we're considering that part of your income for retirement. The blue line that goes through this chart that represents expenses, so anytime you see the columns above the blue line, that means you have more income coming in than expenses in a given year. Um, also on this page, we're showing you your whole plan highlights, but what I really wanna do is show you all of the different areas of my plan that we can customize. So when I look at my plan, we kind of break it up into a lot of categories with goals, income, social security, annuities and pensions, savings and assets withdrawals. We're going to just uh, fly through some of these sections. Um, on basic profile and goals, you're asking for your single or married filing uh, status for your tax structure in the plan. We're also asking you for your longevity age of you and your spouse if you have one, so we know how long we want your plan to be funded. The next thing I want to show you is work and other income. This is where we're gonna enter any kind of earned income that you have. The nice thing about this section is it's really flexible. You know, not only do you put in what your current income is, you can model that in the future. So I'm gonna be earning income from now through age 60. You know, if you're someone who is thinking about modeling, you know, a sabbatical or retiring early, or maybe, you know, one spouse wants to stay home with kids, you're 
easily able to model different ranges of work times, uh, which can be really powerful when you're thinking through, you know, your scenario for your long term projections. I also want to call attention over here to your updates. So all of these charts are going to update in real time. You have the option to look at a chart to see if your savings will run out, your savings balances over time, uh, that same income versus expenses chart. Uh, you can look at your score or your taxes. So it's really helpful to toggle through these different charts depending on what screen you're on and what supporting information that you have. So for example, all this updates in real time. So if I change my monthly income to $20,000, we're gonna see that um, my income, projected income went up in real time. So it, it had a big increase. Also on this page, you have the ability to model passive income. Most people use this to model income from rental property. The next section gets into detail about social security. So we ask you to enter in your social security based on your full retirement age. And that's so we can separately give you the option to choose when you wanna claim social security. So you have the option to claim, you know, early or to delay until when you're 70. And as Steve mentioned, we will be coming out with the Social Security Explorer tool to help you dig deeper into some of those lifelong benefits and how you can optimize your planning strategy. Social Security is one area where we do allow you to model assumptions separately. So you can separately enter the cost of living um, appreciation for Social Security. Yeah, I will demo uh, Roth and tax modeling, absolutely. Um, the next section is annuities and pensions. So you have the ability, if you already own an annuity, you know the cash flow, you can put that in here. If you're thinking about purchasing an annuity in the future, whether it's an immediate or deferred annuity, you can put that here and enter in all the information. You also can model pensions. Uh, we have two different types of pensions. So we have a monthly pension with, when you know your cash flow, and we have a lump sum pension when you're expecting to receive a lump sum value, we let you select the destination account for where that goes. This section can be particularly helpful if you're thinking about how you should take your pension, whether you should take it in a lump sum or whether you should take it over time. You can model one scenario that uses the monthly pension, another scenario that uses the lump sum, and then you're able to see how that affects your overall financial picture far into the future. The next section is uh, savings and assets. So here we have, this is where we model all of our account information. This first topic is about tax deferred uh, accounts, both retirement income and other accounts. So here we see that in this example, we have a 401k. We also have a Roth 401k and a Roth IRA. Uh, the spouse has a 529 plan set up for children, um, a former 401k, an HSA plan, and then we also have a catch-all for other pre-tax. The account type is really interesting because when you make contributions to these accounts based on the type, it's going to assume the tax treatment on the contribution and the withdrawal. So when I make a contribution to a Roth account, it's going to know that it's taxed on the way in. And when I make a withdrawal from the Roth account, it's going to know not to tax at all. Further down on the page, we also ask about other savings. So this is cash savings, whether it's in you know, a bank account or a brokerage account. Um, when you select capital gains treatment, that means that all the withdrawals coming out of this account are going to be taxed at a long-term capital gains rate instead of at ordinary income. As long as you enter the cost basis, the proportional amount of growth will be taxed at the long-term gain state. So very important to enter in the cost basis. We let you uh, model contributing to different accounts. So as you have new income coming in, if you want to direct it towards different savings goals, whether that's your 401k or HSA, you can certainly do that here. And then if you're expecting a lump sum or an, inherit an inheritance, a windfall, uh, we allow you to add after-tax contributions at a certain point in time in the future. 
hopefully on this page you can model if you have uh, a, like cash value for business, you have collectibles or other assets. This section in particular, it's included in your net worth, but it's not considered liquid cash flow, so it's not included in most of the calculations when we think about withdrawal strategy um, and our liquid cash. Also on this page, and I'm scrolling back up, is an area for Roth conversions. So I know that's a, a big topic for everybody in this group. Uh, when I think about Roth conversions, I really like to look at taxes. So I'm gonna toggle to the tax area and click on the federal toggle. So here on this chart, we're able to see our projected tax uh, liability broken down by tax bracket between now and the end of our plan. So we can see that in the future, um, like right now while I'm working, I'm in the 22% tax bracket. In the future, uh, because of all the growth and the good savings that I'm doing, I might be in the 24% tax bracket. So that means that I could be eligible for Roth conversions as part of my strategy. And you're able to model that here. Um, so I see that I have a tax window. I started filling this out. And as I enter in more information, for the conversion amount, converting from my 401k into a Roth IRA account, you can see in real time that we're adding tax liability, but we're also uh, reducing our future tax liability. The area in red on that chart is gonna continue to slightly decrease as we're moving our tax liability forward. So using this chart and this section of the tool together, to really experiment with a Roth conversion strategy on a Roth conversion ladder can be really powerful. Uh, you can also kind of see here uh, that it is telling you on each click of the button whether your lifetime tax liability has increased or decreased, as well as showing you up here your lifetime tax liability. So adding in all of your tax liability between now and the end of your plan. While we're on the topic of withdrawals, I'm gonna talk about uh, the withdrawal section next. So um, in the tool, we model several different withdrawal strategies. The based on spending needs strategy assumes that you're modeling exactly what you put into the plan. Um, if your expenses exceed um, your income, then you're gonna start withdrawing from some of your accounts. So the tool actually has in order of operations for how we do this. We always take withdrawals from new income, then we take withdrawals from taxable, then tax deferred, then Roth, then HSA. So this strategy right here is not necessarily showing you which account it's coming from, it's just showing you if it's taking a withdrawal from your accounts to meet your expenses modeled in the tool, okay? The blue is representing your RMDs, your required minimum distributions. And as we make changes in the tool and change our expenses or bring forward uh, withdrawals, your RMDs will change and update in real time as well. We have two other uh, withdrawal strategies that you can model. Maximum spending is actually the opposite of spending needs. Uh, when you're taking out only the expenses modeled in your plan, maximum spending is actually taking out um, it's reducing your plan, it's running an optimization to say, what if I wanted to deplete my assets for the entire plan um, by my longevity age? So I wanna deplete my assets by longevity. How much can I take out every single year to maximize my spending and my enjoyment of my money um, throughout time? So from here, you're able to set the date of when you want that to start and then experiment um, with how much money you can take out. So this can really help you have more comfort when making decisions. If you're thinking about, you know, can I afford to go on vacation or can I afford to buy an RV or a second home? We also have a fixed percent uh, withdrawal strategy that kind of uses the 4% rule. So we calculate 4% um, of your portfolio and inflate that over time and use that strategy for your withdrawals. Uh, for expenses, we have lots of different ways to model expenses. So you can just put in your monthly expenses. You can model it by different phases of time. So maybe, you know, before retirement, after retirement, 
Maybe you're more into early retirement, mid-retirement, and later retirement. Um, so this can be really helpful. If you want to have a more detailed budget and do line item modeling, then we have a Planner Plus Budgeter where you can enter in all of these expenses. You can also take advantage of the ability to create multiple budgets, one for your basic expenses and one for more discretionary expenses so that you can match these up to your pessimistic or your optimistic assumptions. Uh, next, we can model our real estate. So whether your primary residence is, you know, you own it outright, you have a mortgage or you rent, you can model that here and we'll calculate the mortgage payments for you. The most important part of this section is putting in the, the zip code of your primary residence because that's going to actually determine your state tax structure. For Roth conversions, we looked at federal tax structure. For this section, I want to look at state tax structure. So living in California, it's a very high tax state. We can see in the future while I'm working, there's a lot of taxes, as well as when I'm taking RMDs, there's also a lot of taxes. So one thing we can do is you know, model a change to our uh, primary location. Maybe we're thinking about uh, relocating to Florida or Washington or Texas, a lower tax state. So in this case, in this scenario, I'm thinking about, okay, at 65, I'm retired, I'm gonna sell my primary home and I'm gonna buy a home in Florida, okay? And when I look at this chart, I now can visually see the difference that I'm saving in taxes, uh, which, which is pretty neat. So if you're you know, thinking about moving, this is a great thing to experiment with. You know, if you have other properties, you can also enter those. And then you can also model purchasing or selling real estate in the future. So we're not limiting you to just what you own now. We really want you to be modeling everything because we want to show your whole financial picture. In terms of medical, we have a couple calculations. We want you to model your expenses before Medicare. And then we will estimate uh, your Medicare um, cost based on a variety of different combinations of policies. Well, this is really neat because if you say, you know, you smoke, we're going to increase your um, estimate. This uses Medicare's API, so all the information is up to date. If you have other medical conditions, you're going to see your costs increase. Of course, these are estimations. Uh, when you use estimate for, uh, projected Medicare expenses, it will add in IRMA if that is something that you're subjected to. So the additional amount of uh, Medicare fees that you have to pay if you're above a certain adjusted gross income. And lastly, we do a uh, model long-term care. Uh, you can often see that uh, spike towards the end of your plan in terms of expenses. That little spike is for long-term care. It's based on your longevity age and it kicks in three years before your uh, longevity age. So that's kind of the big overview of things that you can do in the tool. After you go through all of your plan, you get all your information really accurate, then we recommend that you do a few things. Uh, we recommend that you go to coach suggestions. This is going to run through your plan and it's going to actually generate a series of rules that are going to help you. Um, so if you have gone through and uh, created made adjustments to your plan, these are gonna change. So if you looked at it at the beginning as we did, you wanna come back here to see if there are any changes. And I think I'll pause here and maybe start taking questions. Michelle, a uh, question for you. Sure. Um, I was trying to solve some user technical issues, so I might have missed it if you talked about it. I was just wondering about any incorporations of the recent rules for like the eight and a half percent health care and its effect on the subsidy or premium tax credit on the ACA stuff. Yeah, so right now ACA uh, is not included. That is something that you'd have to manually adjust for, but it is in our plans to add sometime later in the year. Okay, thank you. I think you mentioned too that um, I think you said $100 a month when I think you meant to say 
hundred dollars a year when you went on the slide with the with the costs. Um, uh, like, that's the membership cost or the sign up oh, yeah, cost. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 we charge eight dollars a month, but we charge it annually, so it's ninety six dollars a year, uh, and that's yeah, that's an annual fee. Um, and then someone was asking, we do have a fourteen day trial where you can try out everything she's showing you, and if you decide to cancel in the fourteen days, we do ask for a credit card up front, but we will never charge you. But for what it's worth, we do <laughs> we are like you know this is the challenge we have really. It's like what's what's interesting is we see, you know, traditional not bulk health people, but you know, many folks, they go to wealth advisors and they'll pay 1% of their million bucks, $10,000 a year, and they're fine with it. But then if you're like, oh, it's it's $100 for this, they're like, wait, um, but I'm paying. You know, it, it's just a psychological difference that we see. Yeah, we've heard that as we review tools, you know, somebody will say, well, you have this free tool, but the other one's $5 for 400 features and they they balk at the $5. So it's amazing to me when talking about the money you're, you're talking about here, people's uh, you know, their savings. There's a question, uh, is the plan in the demo a reasonable one? Uh, the question is, it looks like having huge incomes, like greater than 500 grand a year in the later years while spending very little in the early years, or is just a first cut applying suggested improvements? Yeah, so the this plan is very heavy in assets. Um, it's a demo plan, so we wanna take advantage of all of the different areas. Uh, and also want to be able to show Roth conversions in a very uh, visual way. So in order to do that, I did inflate the assets of savings and assets to give this person very large 401k and tax deferred balances. Okay. Um, could you talk a little bit about your privacy policy? Yeah, so um, all of our data is encrypted um, and we use like bank level security. Uh, where we go through constant iterations of, you know, taking security audits and risk measures. Um, and our, sec our security policy is on our website. Yeah, it's been validated. We have a privacy policy in terms of use. Uh, we use a third party uh, group called TrustArc that reviews it every year. And we're also running our own security penetration tests and kind of auditing ourselves. And in fact, I mean, one interesting thing is we also have members of our community. We actually have a member of our community right now who's a recently retired security expert who's like, hey, listen, I'll volunteer my time to help you out. I mean, one thing that we see is actually our audience is full of very smart people who are super interested in this, who are helping us out. And so, um, you know, where it makes sense, we'll definitely um, collaborate with folks. But if we take it super seriously. We know that it's, uh, you know, we, we're holding people's, you know, super um, important information. Now, another way, one, one other thought on this is we did actually purposely construct the tool so that you do put an email in to create an account, but we don't ask for your full name, your phone number, your address, or anything else. Um, and if you don't want to link accounts, you can just do it manually. So you end up with, you know, you could semi-anonymize, you know, you know where your accounts, what your, what your account names are, and then roughly put in your account values and you're not giving away that much information. So we did that on purpose, um, but you can link accounts if you want to. And, and we work with Plaid, who's our uh, you know, data account linking provider. They, they power many of the top sites out there for most of them. Thank you. There's another question out there about state tax intricacies and the detail that required at the state level compared to the federal level. Um, how do you deal with the states? Yeah, so we try to keep um, the state data as up to date as possible. Uh, so it does correlate with all our different account types. So contributions and withdrawal um, going in, withdrawals coming out. Uh, we update everything once a year. Yeah, I mean, and one of this is this also goes back to learning with our community. We we do hear, especially when we first rolled this out, you know, we'll hear from like a teacher. Uh, this is a true true case, you know, in like New York, and they'll say, hey, my teacher's pension is federally taxed, but not state taxed because it's a state pension. And so we'll actually adapt the platform to handle that edge case. So we, you know, this, we do have to continually upgrade the plat update the platform so the projection stay as accurate as possible. And then we'll also shape it based on what we're hearing from live users. You know, we have thousands of users every day on this platform. 
And could you speak to the, uh, let's say the architecture of the system? Like, is it in the cloud or where is it? And not in your basement, I hope, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm running yeah, on so your laptop, no, right? <laughs> it, it, it is on the cloud. Um, we actually did used to run our own data center way back, but it's all on the cloud. And, you know, we use industry standard best practices. I mean, it's built to scale. Uh, I mean, one thing you'll see is when you're using a tool, like we are running thousands of Monte Carlo uh, simulations behind the scenes. We have built the platform to be able to run. So in our future vision, so there's 150,000 people have created plants. You know, in the not too distant future, we want to 10X that to go to one and a half million people. We, we want to be able to run thousands of simulations per user on a regular basis. So this will be, you know, billions of simulations we're running all the time. Uh, so we have architected the system and then you'll see it's pretty responsive and fast to, to do that. Um, you know, we believe that planning can help not just people in the US when we have like people from India, Europe, all over the world using this thing that uh, it can help, you know, planning and education in a completely aligned way can help hundreds of millions of people. I mean, there's 7 billion people on this planet. A billion people have money, you know, and, and more are going to get it as globalization happens and they need to make good financial decisions. The people in this group represent the top, you know, 0.0001% of financially educated people. Um, and in, a, in an ideal future, we would leverage these kinds of communities to help other people that are much earlier in the education curve, um, you know, to, to make good choices for their whole lives. When you, um, uh, Michelle, when you showed us those recommendations, after you put in the rough cut plan, you went into a screen that had like six or eight recommendations. From your experience with all your users, uh, what are the most common recommendations that are, people are missing that they should should be doing? The suggestions from the coach, let's say. Yeah. Like, I mean, in a bulk, bulk with all your users and what you guys have seen. So we run this across, uh, you know, over a hundred different uh, rules and regulations. Uh, you know, almost everybody we recommend review your plan with your spouse, you know, socialize it, talk about it, use this as uh, a opportunity to talk about values, especially with someone who's not quite as interested in money, because usually the person who's super interested and makes this their hobby is the one filling out this plan. Um, you know, we'll also um, run different uh, calculations to see, you know, oh, this is um, out of average or, you know, you missed an input. Often people will forget to put in medical expenses before Medicare. That's a very common one. Uh, sometimes people will forget to put in a zip code in uh, home and real estate, which is really important to take advantage of the more detailed state tax calculations. Uh, we'll, we'll run a lot of um, like scenarios to say, you know what, you've selected to withdraw money before you're 59 and a half, there might be a penalty. Now we don't model that what the penalty would be, but we do try to alert you of any potential risks in your plan so you know where to investigate further. Now, I think you may have mentioned it, but do you do you take care of the IRMA surcharge on the high income look, look back for Medicare? We do. So we definitely take care of um, IRMA in the background. It's part of your medical assumption when you think about medical estimates. You know, one thing I didn't show are a lot of the insights charts. Once you enter your accurate plan, then we have all these charts that show very, very detailed assumptions. So. Here, we're looking at the projections of estimated income and estimated expenses. So here, when we look at just this blue or our lifetime medical expenses, you know, this is inclusive of all your premiums, all your co-pays, long-term care insurance, IRMA, everything is all wrapped in these. And then you can click on any year uh, to kind of freeze it in time for that year. So I'm looking at when I'm 77, it's telling me exactly what my medical projections may be. And then these are all in future dollars. Michelle, there was a question earlier and I, I, I don't know if you covered it. I stepped away for a minute. It asked about if there was a spot for real estate taxes. Obviously we have people from around the country with vastly different property taxes. Is there a spot for that in there? Yeah, so uh, one thing that we do is we ask for, you know, your current home value um, and, you know, then we estimate what you might sell it for. 
but we actually don't uh, calculate the tax because so many people do customize strategies with depreciation, 1031 exchanges. So what we do recommend is that you kind of figure out what you think that your tax liability will be, you know, based on what you bought the house for. We don't ask for that. And then put that amount in expenses, modeled as an expense, because that's going to make your plan a little more accurate. Thank you. Um, one other thing that I didn't show was the Roth Conversion Explorer. So Steve has mentioned this a few times. Um, it's actually an engine that's been looking at your plan uh, and calculating thousands of different combinations to try to figure out what strategy for convert Roth conversions is going to generate the largest estate at longevity. So this ran through my plan, and it's projecting that you know if I do Roth conversions, I might have uh, you know, over $2 million more million at the end of my plan or my longevity. Uh, it's going to give me the year to convert at uh, each age, what account, and the amount that it should come from. Now, right now, this tool is separate from the plan, so you actually have to manually enter it in your plan. But what this does is it really like gives you a starting point for your strategy, and it helps you think about it in a, you know, a way that is very hard to calculate on your own because it's including all of the different aspects of our plan. It's including new income coming in, it's including taxes, it's including IRMA, it's including you know, how your expenses change from year to year. Uh, so it's pretty neat. Uh, as I scroll down the page, you can actually see the comparison of taxes between the plan that you have modeled and the plan in the Explorer. So you kind of notice that you know, with your current plan, uh, you're paying less taxes up front but then it kind of uh, switches. And in the future, the Roth optimized plan, you're paying less taxes. Uh, and this is actually one place where we do expose IRMA. So if you uh, are looking for that, you can see it here, that in the optimized plan, um, by doing those conversions earlier, for a long period of time in the future, you're actually reducing your IRMA surcharge completely. Michelle, we have also a question um, about, can we handle income from an S-Corp where not all income is taxed the same way? Yeah, so for real estate and S-Corps, the way that we recommend doing it is instead of putting in the uh, gross amount, that you put in the profit amount in as income. Uh, that's where we are today. Michelle, I think there was a question earlier about um, changes in asset allocation through time. Could you speak to that a little bit, a little bit more? Yeah. So um, what we do right now is, sorry, let's go to the right page. On the savings and assets page, you know, we ask for two different values: an optimistic and a pessimistic growth rate. And that's so you know you can toggle between these. You'll see your whole plan update in real time depending if you choose optimistic or pessimistic. The optimistic and pessimistic growth rates are how we mirror the asset allocation that's actually in this account. So when I look at my 401k and I see a growth rate of 8% and 5%, I think it's invested um, in growth stocks. Now, today this represents over like the same value every single year. So you really want to choose a value that is like a rolling average, not necessarily representative of, you know, just um, a couple years. You want to think about the entire time span. There are ways to kind of override it and kind of shift money into another account if you really want to completely change your asset allocation. In general, just recommend that you pick a happy medium that is representative of the entire lifespan um, of your account. Yeah, I think I think what they're asking for is, you know, I'm 45 and I'm I don't mind being 100% in the stock market, but but by the time I get to be 65, I want to be 50% in the market, and yeah. by the time I'm 80, I want to be 90% in in bonds or something like that. I think that's the yeah. so idea. We'll, we'll be making um, updates to asset allocation to include that functionality and some other stuff around just being able to pick. I'm in mean, growth funds, I'm in bonds, and make these projections a lot easier. You know, in general, this tool is super flexible 
and uh, there's definitely a workaround for everything. So today the workaround for completely shifting your asset is to actually just like create a second uh, temporary plan that will be in the future and then manually transfer the balance into that new account uh, using our manual withdrawal and transfer area. And then you're able to kind of in the future shift the money and then it starts growing at a different rate that might be more conservative. Yeah, I mean, okay. I mean, to be fair, I mean, we are definitely, we're hearing this from other people too. So we are working on a UX redo of this whole section to make it simpler to do what we're hearing from users, which one of them is like, hey, I will, I'm planning on essentially de-risking my portfolio as I get older. If you have any other questions, you can put them in the chat. I'll show one more chart because uh, I didn't show this yet. This is pretty nifty. It's our tax projection chart. So we've looked at some of these values already as a small chart, but this is a much larger chart. Uh, this is showing you your projections for estimated taxes. It's showing you the actual like source of the tax of how we're figuring it out. And then it's also showing uh, your tax deductions, whether you're taking a standard deduction or you're able to uh, kind of benefit from uh, some other information. And then at the bottom, we have this larger chart, again, that's showing uh, the different tax brackets. Uh, something crazy is going on with this chart, uh, but normally it shows standard deductions. We have a question about, you know, modifying values. Yeah, we we basically restricted planner to um, limit the changing of rates and that's only available in plus. But again, you can, I mean, if you really want to, uh, you know, it, not pay anything, you can go, you can sign up for plus, put a credit card in, change everything, print your plan, cancel, and you'll have a complete plan. In fact, and we'll also save the data. Um, what you'll lose is the ability to make changes in the future and kind of manage it over time. Um, and we have had some users game us where they're like, they'll do that, cancel, come back a year later, sign up, <laughs> cancel. Um, but, you know, for what, I mean, really, like we're trying to build a business that does this in a very different way, but we can only do it if, um, you know, use if the model works uh, at scale. Like we get enough users that support and how we're trying to do business. Michelle, there was a question about, uh, about, um, tax rate assumptions and, you know, future tax rates changing or sunsetting. Uh, if you want to maybe talk about how that would be modified or such in there. Yeah. So the tax structure that we use is today's current tax structure, and that's used for the duration of the plan. So we use today's tax structure for today and in the future. We do get a lot of requests to, uh, you know, be able to model the projected the potential change in 2026 and even change, be able to adjust to make the future have a higher tax rate. So it's something that we're thinking about and considering we know it's uh, a highly desired feature. Thank you. And then there was a, a question there about um, matching an advisor with a, a client. How do you do that? Do you have any criteria for that? So we're talking a lot about our service model right now. And Michelle, actually, in addition to like managing and doing all these demos and everything else, runs services for us. So we, today we have a very limited, you know, we, we have adv advisors internally, but we are looking at making this available to, through other advisors, you know, that offer at least flat fee uh, and completely transparent pricing. Um, there's no, users can definitely take this and many of them do, they sign up themselves and they have an advisor and they share it with their advisor, either the printed version or they, they collaboratively do it with them. We are going to be making collaborative planning. We do it internally, but we'll make that easier for the user to control or they can grant access to, to other people if they want to. Um, that'll, you'll see that evolve over the course of this year. We're, we're not really, I mean, our, our main focus is the software. And, and and supporting, you know, the user base and, and changing it very quickly. Uh, our expertise is not building, you know, a giant CFP network. Steve, um, on one of those screens, you talked about re refactoring the UX for 
asset allocation things. Could you just tell us about that process when you get a bunch of requests on the same thing and you guys decide to go down the path and make the changes? And how does that actually happen? And then how do you test that uh, what you did didn't, didn't blow up other things? And, and how do you roll it out? <laughs> sure. So we've, you know, our team has grown. I mean, we basically doubled in the past year. Um, and we did get a little institutional funding, uh, but we're still a relatively lightly funded company. Um, you know, we've raised a total of $5 million for this company, which is like nothing compared to like a personal capital that's raised $250 million, uh, which is good because we're focused on keeping our costs low and, and keeping our infrastructure costs we're super low so it, we can keep our prices low. Um, but basically, yeah, we hear from users. Um, well, we do a lot of support. So Michelle's team does all the intercom chat support. So we'll hear users from users that way, office hours, AMAs. You know, we're, 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 we definitely are listening to users all the time and seeing you know, where they, what they want. And then we have a roadmap that where we're decking up, hey, this is what users want. This is where we think the product needs to go. Uh, we design those things. We use, uh, you know, some various back office testing platforms so we can test the UX. We also have a beta program, which you can sign up to be part of. And um, certain features you'll see are marked as beta. So if you're in the beta program, there's actually two levels. There's like, hey, you have to be part of the beta program to even see it. And then we'll make something beta and but publicly available, but it's still Marcus Beta because it's still being worked on. Uh, so, you know, we we kind of roll it out in phases. Okay, thank you. Um, and and just to answer your testing questions and accuracy questions, I mean, we do a lot of so we write we write unit tests for the software. We can run simulations. So like when we we this past quarter we created the ability to run, it used, we actually used to run forecasts locally on your machine. Now we run them server side. So like, for instance, we're rolling out some changes to our scoring methodology right now. So we are running scores for hundreds of thousands of people behind the scenes or accounts behind the scenes to make sure that the changes that we're doing um, as a way to kind of like test them all at once. I mean, this is all kept internal, but we, we basically run simulations and unit tests at scale today behind the scenes in order to kind of like see how are these changes affecting people's plans. Okay, there's a couple more questions in the chat. Um, does the plan model the indexing of the standard deduction and tax bracket? Basically, does it assume the top of the 22% bracket in 20 years is the same dollar amount as today, or does it go up by some amount? So we increase the brackets and the deductions, the rates stay the same. Uh, and those increase based on your inflation rate that you put in. So we model, I pointed out that you can model the social security inflation rate. You can also model home and real estate separately, medical inflation separately, and then a general inflation rate for expenses. And so the taxes increase with the general inflation rate that you've modeled. Okay, and here's the a question. question oh, did you see the question there about the MFJ? Uh, first, well, the other part of that question was about uh, standard deductions um, and uh, itemized. So the tool actually goes through and only if you use the budgeter for expenses, it will calculate whether or not uh, it thinks you're better off itemized taxes or standard deduction. And within the budget, you can actually set different items to be tax deductible. So if you're making charitable gifts or you know, you're know you taking write-offs for uh, business or other purposes, uh, property taxes, uh, it will factor that into your tax calculation. Um, here, I'll take the question about Monte Carlo and income. I, I mistyped in there. So basically we want to, you know, we're rolling out Monte Carlo for every investable asset class that has risk and giving users more and more control over that. And then, you know, again,